Welcome back to another video of Tropical Island in Unreal Engine and in this video I'm going to be creating a procedural foliage uh, spawner for my grass type. I'm going to be using the foliage mode to convert my static meshes to foliage. So once I drop them in here I can go ahead and create a foliage folder in my meshes for the grass. And I'm going to go ahead and save each individual grass type. I have seven of them, but I'm only going to be using six since one of them is a dry branch. I'm going to be probably using that later for something else. But here I'm going to go ahead and play around with some of these parameters for the placement of the grass. And also got to make sure that I include the landscape layer, which is going to be called grass underscore five and the minimum inclusion for the landscape weight of 0.02. I'm going to go ahead and test this out by using alpha brush. I'm going to be painting the grass type 05. I've used this previously before, but I have not used it to populate it with grass yet. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some of the parameters. Notice how my cool distance has been reduced compared to my previous videos. I am dropping it down to about 4,500 for the cool distance. And as of right now, it's compiling some of the shaders since I haven't really painted some of that grass type in those areas of my landscape. But as it's doing that, I can work on my procedural foliage for uh, allow landscape and allow PSP being disabled for the grass. And here we have a good example of it procedurally being generated once I regenerate the actual procedural box. But what I've got to do next is make it a little bit more dense and I'm going to go ahead and try to re-simulate this and I'm getting a better result. So now I'm going to go back to my painting mode which is under my landscape tools and I'm going to choose a little bit of a different brush. Uh, I tend to stick to one particular brush but then once in a while I change them and this one looks like more of an X but it doesn't really paint in that way it's more of a heavy in the center and a little bit lighter on the sides so I'm gonna use that to paint in some of these areas that I feel like the grass would be growing in the areas that I have not covered yet and again I'm trying to minimize the amount of sand that I have in the center of the tropical island here. So certain areas will be left behind and untouched. And some of the areas I'm going to go ahead and start paying over the existing foliage type and some of the landscape materials that I already currently have. Uh, uh, later down the road, I'll be adding clover. And this was a grass type previously used but I've disabled it and I will be using the same concept and creating another procedural foliage for it as well. But before I do that I want to make sure that I cover the rest of the stuff and this grass type that I'm using as of right now has only one color and hopefully I can add different variation of grass colors and then even heights which I already did. I have added the different heights, but not the colors yet. The height can be actually achieved through the actual procedural generation of its scale on X and Y, Z. Well, technically the Z value is what changes the height of it and also the age for when you spawn them. So if you look close to it, uh, some of the stuff is mixed with the fern type but it's okay. Uh, again, some of the stuff is going to be just painted and some of the stuff is going to be an actual grass type. So let's go ahead and simulate this again. And I think it's not spotting here just because of the really heavy shadows that are being casted by those trees. But the areas that I have sunlight seems like it's been populating the grass really really good now this grass is 
not interactable yet it does not interact with the actual character but hopefully i can get to that once all the vegetation has been placed in the world i'll be looking into some of the other projects that i have and again once i copy this procedural box uh, i don't remember exactly which one i duplicated from but the rotation had to be reset back to zero that's why it was not properly set up and wasn't actually spawning so it wasn't even actually the shadows i believe because the box was not fully extended to the distance where i was painting the grass type so sometimes gotta go back and make sure it's set in the right position so after simulating you can start seeing that this grass is spawning in a shade even though I thought it wasn't. So definitely keep that in mind. Make sure that the boxes are big enough. And if you look at it, I've decreased the exclusion landscape to 0.01 instead of 0.2. And then I increased the max height or the pitch angle to 75. And not of course for all of them. Some of them are a different variation. So I kind of have to do each individual separately so that way it gives more of a variation depends on each particular uh, 3d model of this type of and if you look at my clustering i've set that up to uh, a higher number for a number of steps uh, that's how many pretty much years it takes to grow and then seeds per steps is pretty much determines how many it will spawn in that area and my collision radius and shade radius has been uh, decreased from original number to place them a little bit closer as well so the lower the number the closer they will spawn and again the shading radius will take over the other grass types that can you know potentially spawn there now of course the height for the placement is set to 1600 uh, that's something that you know might not be too important uh, for some of you guys but if you're trying to create a variation in different heights uh, I recommend kind of playing around with numbers uh, but if you're just trying to spawn something on that particular material you don't really need to worry about the actual height of it because if you are painting grass type above the ocean level then it will just spawn wherever you paint but if you want to create a gradual transition then you can uh, set up different numbers for each grass type so now we're gonna go ahead and play around with this clover this was my uh, grass type that i originally had set up in the material itself for the landscape and the reason i'm changing to foliage type because every time i paint something it uh, disappears and has to re-render so i don't really like that uh, workflow so i'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same thing what i did with the grass type uh, the previous one i just you just saw me do this one is gonna be four different clovers and i'm gonna also create another folder use another foliage mode to create foliage type and i try to keep all my foliage within a green folder so that way i use color coded folders to remember all the stuff you can see here i have quite a lot of different folders for like textures material materials and landscape layers and things like that trying to keep the same colors so the way visually i can remember where they all at now going back to my mi landscape here i'm gonna change my clover to false because this was a blueprint that i've used uh, from brushify but i've extended it for clover and you can see that there's other ones like fern oh four five and six and so on this was all for my previous project and also for testing purposes but again the grass type didn't really turn out well for me so i'm gonna go ahead and use the procedural box and set up some of these settings for the clover and again the height variations gonna be changed for all of them but since i'm using four foliage types simultaneously i put a general information for all of it and i can go back and then change each individual for whatever uh, thing that i want to change which usually is the height um, the collision radius shade radius 
uh, in clustering for like number of steps and seat per steps and things like that. Uh, max age and procedural scale, all that can be changed for each individual separately, so that way you give a better variation. So I'm only gonna do height and collision and shade radius here, but again, you have more options to change. But it's easier when you have 20 of those or 30 different foliage types to do all at once. Now the other thing, you can see that there is a procedural scale all the way in the bottom. Mine that says 1 through 2. And right underneath of it, you have a scale curve. You can only adjust that if you have individual foliage types selected. So if you have more than one, it will not let you play with that curve. But if you do have a single one selected, then you should be able to work. And notice after I have changed my blueprint it has to recompile all the shaders for the landscape so i have about 15,000 shaders to recompile i'm gonna go ahead and um, wait for this to be done but as it's uh, compiling shaders i can at least work with the world outline a little bit and re-simulate some of the stuff while it's thinking so you know like copying and pasting the location for the clover, uh, the actual scale, and making sure that the rotation is at zero. And of course, disabling everything else except for making sure that it's spawned only on the landscape material itself. And you can see that it's there, but uh, not <laughs> the amount that I want it to be. So I'm going to go back and increase some of these settings. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick flight through to see all the clover that we're trying to re-simulate, and boom, we got that really dark clover spawning right here that is being taken over, but for some reason it's not spawning the other ones. Let's go ahead and paint a little bit more of it and see how it will behave after I paint a little bit more of the clover material and then we're gonna go ahead and re-simulate this one more time and you'll notice me re-simulate it quite often since pretty much every time I paint something I have to re-simulate this and sometimes I'll have to go back and re-simulate other grass types or procedural foliages and things like that to see how it behaves and sometimes you end up painting over other materials therefore you'll have to re-simulate a couple times over and over again let's go ahead and add a little bit more grass here because some of the stuff looks just too bright so again trying to get rid of all this sand let's go ahead and see what it looks like trying to find this clover right here and it's uh, not really spawning there. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the height of it. Collision radius. Let's uh, try to lower it to uh, single digit numbers and see what will come up. Even the spread variation you can see that I've lowered it but other ones I will keep almost in the single digit as well except for the collision radius for one of those. Keep this at 14, let's do this one 5, 9, and so forth. Alright, so everything should be in place. Let's go ahead and re-simulate. Well, actually, you know what, let's uh, bring the collision radius back to uh, 100 on one of those. Just because I don't really want that to be showing up. And it's still not spawning anything, which is very strange, so... I just have to play it with numbers sometimes. I don't know, let's see... Maybe I wrote something down. No, collision... Uh, is about the number that I was looking for. The aerial element is properly spelled. That could be one of the issues once in a while, too, if you're not properly setting up or writing down the information. Let's go ahead and 
reset this. So whenever you click this yellow arrow, it pretty much sets everything back to the way it was. Okay. I think the spread variation is too uh, small on that end. And again, oh, here we go. Okay, so the spread variation was, I guess, too lower of the number. I guess the higher the number, the better. And again, uh, what I'm trying to achieve here is that little smaller clover. I want that to spawn somewhere like underneath, but it's not really working out well. Uh, but I am satisfied at least with this look so f for now. You can see that it's one type of a clover in most of the areas. But uh, what's cool about it, it has... Uh, different height variations, and I'm trying to see if I can spot any other type of clovers, which I seem to not be able to find any. And I think it's due to the uh, shade radius for this one uh, in particular. So if I were to go back to actual static mesh and open that up uh, and look at it, yeah, so this one right here, I'm looking for the clover of three. I really want this clover 03 to spawn somewhat underneath of most of the plants in a somewhat dense volume, uh, just like this one is, but I don't see it anywhere here. Yeah, it pretty much it's just that one type of clover. So what I'll do in the future for most of the, my procedural boxes, they're going to get uh, downsized and I'm going to just create uh, multiple variations of those. and only spawn particular type of foliages so like for clover I have four different kinds but I'm probably gonna break it down even more and I will be doing that in the next video for my rock formations and then you'll see the procedure that I'll be doing with that and hopefully I'll get back to all of my other vegetation and do the same thing because I can create a little bit nicer and more random procedural generation of those so this one right here is clover 04 that is spawning most of it and somehow taken over compared to the other three uh, again i'll have to play with these numbers a little bit more to achieve the look that i'm going for uh, get that uh, variation but i think if i break down the foolish box a little bit more I'll be able to separate them, but as right now it looks pretty cool. And this is what I was talking about, having a different colors of vegetation. You can see that some of this is dark and other plants are a little bit lighter, which is really nice. But again, uh, hopefully I can add more colors for these particular plants in the future, uh, but it's not a priority. That grass in the background seems a little bit uh, too bright and the farther you go away from it. Uh, I don't know if it's the lighting issue, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name one um, dense, uh, clover dense, and then this other one, uh, I'm going to make it light, and we're going to separate it. So the clover dense is going to have just one of those, which was taken over pretty much of all the clover, and I'm going to create the volume of that to 0.7 which means that the clover will only spawn at 0.07 but of course I do want to keep it back at 0.01 uh, meaning that anything that's has that clover 01 at that strength of a brush it will spawn and now you see that it's only spawning the clover dense in areas and it's been decreased but that is because I got rid of the other ones. So now for the clover light, just re-simulating and copying the information. And there you have it. I'm starting to see my other clover. Uh, but to fix that, I have to go back and increase some of the seed per step in some of those and number per step. So that way you have different height variations again. But seed per step should populate a little bit more. And if I change the spread variation, uh, we should have a better result. Let's go ahead and save some of the stuff. 40. And look at that. I still have shaders compiling. I'm um, down to like 3,000. 
and again, uh, you know, while it's compiling the shaders, you can work on something else in the project. So let's go ahead and simulate my clover light. So I should start seeing more of this lighter clover here. And it disappeared, but it does reappear somewhere else. Again, that's not the look I'm going for. Like I've mentioned before, I wanted to spawn underneath. You can see that it's building grass every time I change these numbers. Of course, it doesn't do it all the time, but it depends on how drastic the change is in the, your procedural follow box. I'm going to go ahead and increase this brush so that way I can paint a little bit more. Uh, get rid of all the sand and add more of this clover. I think I like somewhat skipped this area. I've painted uh, one section of the island, but not everywhere that I want it. And plus, I have all this dead grass anyway. So let's go ahead and paint it over. So that way it's a little bit more green. Uh, these termite, uh, what do you call them? Uh, mounts gonna remain around the area that has sand but later I think I'm gonna put them in some grassy locations too but they're gonna be divided as well later down the road and I think I'm gonna dedicate a folder to each procedural generation because they're gonna be broken down more and again uh, I want this clover to spawn underneath of these bigger plants I think it'll look really, really nice with that transition between a 2 d material and those big plants, you know, have something small underneath of it, which means I got to make sure my shading radius is, I believe, should be smaller. So that way it can spawn. Can't wait to see what the actual result is going to be like. But again, if I paint underneath of those plants, it should respawn some of this clover. And the best part about this uh, procedural foliage is that once I re recalculate this, anytime I paint anything, uh, the actual procedural foliage does not disappear on me like it does with the grass type. So I'm not 100% sure if it uh, hurts on performance more by using procedural foliage box versus grass type, but I'll try to keep it in a way where it's a little bit more optimized and that's something like that we'll have to work a little bit more in the future making sure that I didn't go overboard with the amount of grass type I have and also make sure that uh, they have enough LODs and I think with Unreal Engine 5 when that comes out once I transfer this project to Unreal Engine 5 it should be able to calculate all of these vertices and triangulations or of you know each mesh and model at a higher number that it currently can on Unreal Engine 4 so I'm not too concerned too much about it because I'll be working on this level until, until Unreal Engine 5 comes out but I will be focusing a lot on other projects I have quite a lot of stuff coming out soon to share with you guys but I uh, don't really want to go off the topic here so I'm just gonna focus on this landscape for now. And like I mentioned before, I wanna have certain areas that are gonna have a more of a rocky formation and some of it's gonna be uh, just painted over and some of it's gonna have also procedural foliage. Uh, this is gonna be used for collecting resources as well. You'll probably be able to come up and pick up some of these stones. Now, I'll have to separate them. Uh, some of it is going to be more of a sharp stones, some of it is going to be more of a like rounded uh, stones, and it's going to depend on which material I'm using, like for the mossy rocks. Uh, if you look closer, they look more like a white color stone, and probably going to be a little bit more polished. And some of it where I have crates, and other stone that I previously used, which was the rock rough for one and two, probably will have different formations as well. Mm. Is it going to be collectible? I don't know how it exactly it works with procedural foliage box, but if that doesn't work, uh, then we'll have to figure something out. So let's go ahead and paint a little bit more of leaves. And again, I've missed some of the spots and now it's starting to turn out pretty good. And you can see that 
I'm minimizing the amount of that horrible transition between the materials. We have really nice transition between leaves and grass types. You can see that there's some rocks laying down between the ferns. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and fill this area in. I kind of left this out. And those trees going to be taken down later, but they're a good representation, a visual representation of where these trees can be placed. Because all of these can be blueprints, so that way you can interact with them. And we've got a couple more spots here that I want to place. And I think I'll add some actual 3D leaves in here as well. And we'll be a good uh, place for picking up some of those leaves. Maybe you can start a fire or some, something like that. or you know, used to build a roof for your house or something like that where you'll be able to come around and pick some of the stuff up and, you know, find some branches by the bushes. We'll have to uh, consider all of that in. Uh, but none of that is going to be done anytime soon. Uh, again, uh, there's so many more things that I want to work on here before I can even get to that part. Uh, definitely want to look, start looking into adding some sound effects. Kind of really getting bored of silence and just me talking non-stop, I would like to actually hear some sounds of nature. I have hundreds of different sound effects, so it's going to be nice to play with that. Kind of bring it to life. And uh, got a lot of new animals that I will be working with. Uh, a big list. I, I wish I can show it to you right now, but again, it's going to be a probably a separate video for this. Uh, where I'll be able to go over some of the characters that are going to be added to this game. Uh, well, first of all, it's going to be AI, uh, all the animals and things like that, before we'll start working with the character. Uh, so, quite a lot of stuff to be done. But before we do that, I want to make sure that this landscape is somewhat uh, ready for uh, players to run around and explore and trying to minimize the work that I'll have to do in the future. So very eager to work on other projects because that's why I usually do. But as of right now, trying to finish everything that I've started so that way I'm not jumping too much, even though I have worked on the ocean, uh, the shipwreck and things like that, that I still have to go back. And that's why I still have so many actors in my world outliner. Uh, and then, of course, before I start expanding the landscape, I'll have to uh, watch a couple more tutorials and videos on how to uh, set up multiple levels of the landscape in a level. So that way everything can be uh, set up in the proper distance and things like that. So, so here's that plan that I've been struggling with the Monstera plant. Uh, for some reason, it's um, taken over <laughs> most of my vegetation here. But in this area, I have nothing spawning whatsoever, in, like in this section. And it bothers me, so I try to smooth certain things out because sometimes it helps. But uh, nothing is spawning from fern to clover to grass type. And I think it's due to these uh, huge rock formations being placed there. Or maybe uh, later down the road I'll be able to move them out of the way or disable them for a short time and see why it's not spawning anything there. Because I have all these grass types. I have all these different fern types and nothing is spawning except for few. Uh, so again, it's still hard for me to understand some of these numbers uh, and again I'm just testing out the numbers trying to see if anything new will spawn you can see that some of this fern is uh, moving and changing uh, its location but it's not increasing in the amount that I wanted to so let's go ahead and zoom back in you can see that this fern type is there but it's not the way I always pictured it to be I don't know. Maybe I'll put something else there, or 
I can always leave it open for you guys to be able to play something there, uh, build a structure. Uh, I, do, I do have a something planned to build there. It's going to be a stone structure formation that is going to be part of the storyline. Uh, but before I go into that, I want to show you real quick the mesh LOD, uh, different levels in different colors. And it's showing me that this grass type has not been properly set up yet. So if I were to go back to my mesh, uh, it does say small prop. So if I do it foolish type, you can look at the left screen for the current current screen size and LODs. When I set it to a small prop, it does a better job because of the current screen size. Reduction in LODs is much better because it reduces at a shorter distance and it's exactly what I want to do. But I don't see why it's not appearing properly. I don't know, maybe I'll have to. Like you can see, some of those has not been set up. So I'm fixing that real quick. But some of the stuff, even if I were to go back and look at it with the mesh LOD levels, it would still show me in gray or black. Maybe it's just because of the higher quantity. But you should have pretty much all of your meshes change colors like just like this. Uh, and that means you have it done right but some of the stuff is not properly uh, being set up. I don't know, maybe I'll have to restart my computer or something. Not a computer, but uh, my level. Save it up and see what's going on there. I think there's just too much of it that it's not really showing the colors because you can see some of the stuff appearing with like red underneath of it. But it's definitely this jungle plant, so I'll have to definitely work on that one. But that being said, I hope you guys like this video. Um, added couple vegetations. In the next video I'll be working with some of the stone formations and some of maybe other foliage types, not sure yet, uh, but there's definitely going to be a rock formation added and we'll be getting closer to uh, start working with sound effects in uh, future videos. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.